Hey, it's Terry Cutler here again, and I hope you enjoyed the first video and you learned a thing or two about internet safety and some tricks to safeguard you and your family from scammers, the predators, and the hackers. So if you're watching this video from any other site other than internetsafetyuniversity.com, then get your browse over there right now. In our last video, we explored how to uncover if someone's using your name without your knowledge and how to check for fake profiles using Google, an everyday tool that you already know about. It's especially handy for those of you on dating sites. I also showed you how to automate that using Google Alerts. Just remember, what I showed you is just the tip of the largest iceberg. And in this second installment of my free video series, I'm going to talk about adware, spyware, viruses, and how to know if you've already been hacked and being spied on. One of the questions I get asked all the time is, how do I deal with those in-your-face adware pop-ups that seem to be coming out of nowhere? These flashy and often well-designed pop-ups, they look professional and legitimate, but as good as they look, these pop-ups are infected with software that's programmed to go after you. And more specifically, they're after your credit card and your banking information. And hey, that means they're after your identity. Many of the latest threats are designed to hold your data hostage, and the only way to get it back is if you pay between $500 and $25,000. This is known as ransomware. Now, if you're like most people living under a rock for the last couple of years, this ransomware threat earned the scammers and hackers over a billion dollars last year. That's billions with a B. Isn't that crazy? Now, global cybercrime will reach $6 trillion by 2021. And that's why training like this will be so invaluable to help you defend against becoming the next victim. Whenever I speak at live events or appear on the evening news, I always get the same questions. You know those ads that appear out of nowhere? Are, are they real or how do I get rid of them? I just click and click until they go away. So why is my computer so slow? So how do we avoid them and deal with them and get rid of them? Now, I can't check out every computer, but I make it a point to check out one every once in a while. And you guessed it. They were victims unknowingly of adware. Now, an adware is an advertisement that appears on the web or in a software, aptly named adware. Now, in many cases, they accompany a program that you downloaded that you absolutely needed or had to have because it's cheap, fast, and easy. Now, a lot of times, users just install the software and they just keep clicking next, 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 and then they install it, not realizing that it said it was going to install some ad toolbars in your browser. Now, it's easy for hackers and scammers to inject infected ads into the ad network, which is part of the reason why you're getting these pop-ups. Let me give you an example. Have you ever been browsing the web and visit a legitimate website and see a pop-up that says, your PC is infected and running slow. Boost it now with this antivirus solution. Well, these fake softwares could damage your computer or worse, give someone else control of your computer. Now, when it comes to adware, in most cases, you get a notification that the must-have software is also going to install some advertising programs. But the catch is, they'll tell you that in order to use the software, you also have to look at a few ads every now and then. Now, some examples of free software that may contain adware are advanced search engines, instant news and weather updates, computer games, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing programs, fun mouse pointers and desktop themes and backgrounds, emoticons and smileys that'll be using your emails, and some applications that say they'll improve the efficiency of your computer. And then there are ads that'll put the world at your fingertips through a fabulous new search engine that'll make your life easier. You can compare prices between hotels or choose from 20 styles of clothes and then compare the prices. This sounds great and away we go clicking away and then we click next or more but now is a good time to pull back on the reins it's too good to be true right take a deep breath of course we'd love to have the world at our fingertips but as we move further along this continuous click make sure you carefully look at this it says in exchange for offering you a free software product we collect anonymous usage information from your computer that we and our partners may use to select and display targeted branded pop-ups so if we go ahead with our clicks and accept all of this, not only will our workflow be interrupted by all these annoying pop-ups, but in the background, someone or something is packing data. Your data on your shopping habits, your browsing habits, your email address, and so on. This data can be passed on to not so anomalous advertisers or hackers that will use this information to get you to click on links. Even though you may have uninstalled these applications from your computer, there's still little nuggets left behind that can still track your browsing habits. So now the ads are appearing in your inbox with links to click on. How convenient. These scams are so professionally done that it's really, really hard to know if it's legitimate or not. But I think you know what happens when you click on that wrong link. You got it, you get hacked. Usually backdoors get installed on your computer where criminals can enter and leave as they please. They can turn on your webcam and film you or listen to what's going on in the room. 
They can even copy your files to a remote location, which includes tax information, your CV, your medical records, your scanned documents such as a void check or digital signature or passport. You may have sexual images or videos of you and your significant other, which may also leak. And that's when sextortion comes into play. Here's a question I get asked several times a week. The question is, how do I know if my PC's been hacked? Or how do I know if someone is spying on me through my webcam? I want to show you how a simple command line tool can provide invaluable information about what's happening on your system and find out if your PC has been taken over by a hacker or malware. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is close as many programs as you can, such as Microsoft Outlook, Skype, etc. This will allow us to try and find unwanted communication from applications that we don't know about. In my case, I'll leave all my apps open so you can see some activity. Now once you've done that, let's press the start button and type in CMD, which is short for command prompt, and press enter. Once the command prompt has been opened, you're going to want to type in netstat space minus ANO. So essentially what we're doing here is asking Windows to list all the listening and open ports that this system is talking to, and press enter. Now as you can see, a ton of stuff just scrolled off the screen. So let's have a closer look. Let me adjust the size here and scroll up. Okay. So what we're looking for is any established communication. So established communication means your computer is talking to another device on your network or somewhere on the internet at this moment. So as you can see, here we have our local address, which represents your computer IP. Now everyone's will be different, so don't worry about this. But as you can see, my PC also has 127 addresses. Also don't worry about this either because my computer is running special software called VMware, which most of you don't have. Now, as we go to the right, we have foreign addresses, which are other devices your computer is talking to, the current state of the connection, and finally we have the PID, which is the process identifier. Now, a PID is like the name of the software that's talking on this connection, which we'll use to investigate. Now, you'll want to open the Windows Task Manager by right-clicking on the task bar and select Start Task Manager. You can also get there by pressing Control Delete and choosing Start Task Manager. Once it's open, click on the Processes tab, now select view at the top and choose select columns. You'll notice that the PID is unchecked. So go ahead and check that box. Oh, and by the way, all versions of Windows can do this, not just Windows 7. Now some of you have Windows 10, and it's not the same way to enable this function. So in Windows 10, make sure that you right click on the bottom toolbar and choose Task Manager. Once Task Manager is open, click on the Details tab, and then right click on the name in the column and choose Select Column. Once the choices show up, put a checkbox in the PID box. Now, you'll notice some numbers that showed up inside the names of the processes. For simplicity reasons, you'll need to click to sort the process IDs from smallest to largest so we can find stuff quickly. You'll also notice a button called Show Processes from All Users. Let's make sure we press that as well so we can see everything this PC is talking to. Now, what you want to do is match up the process numbers with the names of the applications that are running on it. So for example, if we have process ID 4668, which is running a couple of times here, let's, well, you know, what could this be? Well, once we get the 4668, we can actually see that Skype is using this ID, which is most likely safe. So if we keep going through this list and there's something you're not sure about, well, Google's going to be our best friend here at this point. So you can also right click and select properties and maybe this will give us a bit more insight into what program this is and where these files are located. If you're still running into trouble though, you'll need to contact your family IT guy or bring it into Best Buy to get it serviced. Or for a fee, my team or I can also help you out. I really hope this video was enough to get you started. But if you have questions though, I invite you to join our Internet Safety University Facebook community page where thousands of people just like you can collaborate and share ideas. You never know if your question will be featured in an upcoming video. If you could please share this video with your friends, I'd really appreciate it. There's so many people out there that are infected and they don't even have a clue. And if you're a victim, I'd love to hear your feedback on what you found and if this tip helped you out. So in the next video, I'm going to explore how hackers and scammers are stealing your online social media photos and creating fake profiles to scam your friends and what you can do about it. So stay safe, my friends, and I'll see you in the next video.